So I will start my presentation. I will <coughs> shift away from the technical part for some time. I would like to present uh, a topic on the marketing team four years later. Uh, I will give a bit of context in the next slides. So I will divide the presentation in six uh, parts. First, I will introduce myself shortly. Uh, then I will talk about uh, the presentation that started the team and every the initiative. After that, I will uh, present the marketing team or committee. Uh, I will show the goals that we had initially and the achievements that we have made so far. And then I will try to summarize uh, the roadmap or plan that we have ahead. Uh, so let's start uh, with a brief introduction. Uh, I'm Diego Riz. I am a Colombian living in Germany. Uh, I got a bachelor degree in systems engineering in Colombia. Then I moved to Europe and got my MBA title in the Netherlands. That uh, I made the thesis about marketing in open source projects, and so it is what started the whole movement. And I work as a senior consultant at BX Service uh, in Germany. Uh, <coughs> So, uh, for those of you who were there in Lyon 2019, uh, I did a marketing presentation presenting the challenges of trying to do marketing in a community-driven open source because it's not a standard business that you can just market as usual or traditionally. <coughs> and it got a good acceptance, the community uh, thought it was a good idea to move forward and work with it and so we started working towards uh, uh, creating this. Uh, at this point I think the name could have been chosen better. The marketing is sometimes misleading and I think what we do is mostly community development and project governments, like trying to show it and peer to the world. Uh, this is the marketing team. Uh, we are, as you can see, we are very hetero hetero uh, heterogeneous. Uh, mm -hmm. There's me, uh, we, there's Eugene Bark, he's uh, an end user with quite a significant implementation. Uh, he's one of the top donors. Uh, we have Chuck Bucking, I think everyone knows him. He's the biggest educator in the community and uh, an implementer as well. And then we have Carlos Ruiz, uh, he's the co-founder of the project. Uh, I like this team because since it started, we have been meeting every Friday. We always discuss topics that will benefit the community, <coughs> that we think will benefit everyone, that will help the project grow. Because in the end, that's I think that's what we all want. If the project stalls, uh, we are all affected by it. And it's really interesting to have so many backgrounds because then we have a nice perspective from many points of view, and it's it's a it's a good team. Uh, this is also an invitation. The marketing committee is by no means a closed club. It, you are always welcome to join us every Friday. If somebody wants to be part of the team, just raise your hand and we will, glad, uh, we will be glad to have you there. Uh, the goals at the beginning were uh, to improve Idempier's brand and attractiveness. Uh, to improve the transparency and communication in the project, uh, to develop the community, uh, to increase the makers and decrease the takers. This is, uh, those are terms used by the Drupal founder. 
makers are simply those who contribute back to the project and help <coughs> Idempure grow. And he calls takers those who benefit from it but uh, contribute back a little or, or not at all. Uh, we also wanted to generate, generate community generated marketing because uh, as we are a community driven project we don't have that uh, financial muscles that projects like Odo or vendor driven projects have. So we would like to uh, use all the expertise from the community to generate attraction. Uh, we also wanted to assist the project leaders to boost their contributions. That means taking away responsibilities from them to help them focus on what they can do the best. That's reviewing core uh, code, uh, reviewing pre-requests, and so on. Uh, we want to improve the documentation and and make it easier to contribute. Uh, the target market that we showed at the beginning was implementers and developers. Uh, we know end users are an, an important part of the market, but we found that these two players were the ones who contribute the most back to the project. At the end, we are a software uh, project. Uh, our evolution went from 2019, we, we started everything with the presentation, then 2020, we improved the image of the project and communication channels. 2021, we started with some attribution activities and community development. And the 2022, we focus on improving documentation and organizing this conference together with Gora. Uh, these are some of the achievements. Uh, on the first year, we made a lot. We launched a new website, really modern. The old one was really old looking, so it was scaring new developers away. Uh, we created a mission and a mission statement. We created a code of conduct, or not created, but we kind of made it public. Uh, we improved the communication with the community a lot. Uh, this was uh, partially possible because uh, Murilo contributed the Mattermost server and this communication channel improved a lot uh, the, com the communication between the community. That's a huge contribution from Murilo. Uh, we divided guidelines, so the expectations that we have from makers. Uh, we have a new slogan, we hosted uh, four triage days that help us I think <coughs> closing like 460 Jira tickets, so it was quite a productive uh, community event. Uh, we found the list of top contributors and top makers and we made it public because we want to uh, make you all know that we appreciate what you do for the project and you deserve uh, recognition and attribution for that. Uh, we publish uh, an open spreadsheet for the financial expenses in the project so everyone knows what's happening with the donations and where is the money going when you send money to the project. It's not a black box, just everyone knows what's happening there. Uh, we started helping with the release process. Uh, this was really helpful also because we noticed at the beginning that we were we kept releasing new versions, but people were still using really old versions of item pair. So we thought, okay, what's happening? Why is it happening? And we identified its own issues, and we started working towards helping Hengsin and Carlos making the world know there's a new version. These are the new features, and this is why you should upgrade. And. We started a weekly list of changes in the core. I think that was Chuck's idea. Now we post in the forums every week what got into the core, so everyone keeps updated with what's happening. On the second year, uh, we got some testimonials. Uh, we had our first community survey that helped us a lot to identify what the community expects, how they are using Idempeer, 
and it help us make decisions better, like more educated decisions. When we know, for example, the discussion that was before about Oracle and Postgres, uh, that community showed that around 10% of uh, companies using EdenPR are using Oracle, so that help us know, okay, we can focus on Postgres more, but we cannot drop Oracle just like that because there's 10% of people using it. So it helped us make the right decisions or move towards what the community expect. Uh, we, have, we hosted also test days. Uh, this is really helpful. We are doing it yearly before the release. This has helped a lot to kind of make sure that the release won't break any implementation. Uh, during the test days this year, for example, one guy from Ecuador found a bug of a new future that didn't work with Oracle. So we could catch it before the release and that creates a better experience for everyone. Uh, we showed the top makers list with the founders. Uh, uh, yeah, we did a lot of things. We participated for the first time in the Oktoberfest. That was a, a good milestone for the project. We started the Hero of the Month initiative. That was Thomas' idea. Uh, that's a way of recon recognizing those individuals who make outstanding contributions, and we want to thank them in a public manner. And this this has been really like a good way because uh, we feel proud of your contributions, and they feel proud because they are being recognized. And on the third year, we focus on documentation. This is mostly led by Chuck. Uh, we created a documentation framework. We defined how uh, the terminology we are going to use. We did some documentation days to categorize and clean the Wikipedia, remove all all pages that were showing deprecated information wrong data, the wrong way of doing things were still there, so we kind of clean up everything to give a better, ex uh, better experience. Uh, uh, yeah, we started the kind of guideline, if you create a new future that it's really big, uh, we kind of suggest that you don't accept it into the core if it's not documented because then the documentation gap goes bigger and bigger. That was based also on the community survey because the community thinks that the biggest weakness of the project is the documentation or, or the lack of it. So we didn't want to keep this gap growing and growing. So now we created guidelines to help this with this. Uh, we are still uh, working towards that. Uh, many of you know the the learning curve of EdenPR is not really easy. It takes some time to grasp the things, uh, to learn how to use it. So we want to reduce this learning curve to, to make it easier, to, to make everyone uh, feel more welcome and, and things like this. Uh, I want to highlight here uh, to take advantage of this time to highlight our heroes. Uh, these are chosen by the community. Uh, the community shows us who they think made an outstanding contribution. It is important for me to clarify that because it's not like I'm awarding myself. <laughs> so uh, I will show them chrono chronologically. Uh, the first one was Deepak. I think this was because of his quick entry contribution. He was the first chosen hero. Uh, then me. Then we have Eugene. Uh, then we have Nicolas. I think that's a com uh, really known name in the community. Uh, we have Saul. He's the top Docker contributor. Uh, we have Hideaki from Japan. <coughs> I would like to thank Hideaki especially because he he couldn't join us for personal reasons, but he donated money uh, so the conference could happen. So that was really nice. Uh, then we have Norbert Murillo, who unfortunately couldn't join us. 
Uh, then we have Vanessa, she is a graphic designer that was really interesting because she's not a coder, she's not an implementer, but she helps a lot with the images we use for releases, uh, she, the post on social media, she, she was a big part of the mm -hmm. website rebuild, so this was important to see that not only developers or implementers are recognized, but every kind of expertise is useful for the project. Uh, then we have HIP. Uh, then Carlos and Hengsing, obviously, they are always the heroes, I think, not just one month, but all the time. Then we have Nikita, Orlando, Martin, Andreas, uh, Igor, he works in Cloud Empire as well. We have Thomas Bayen, uh, Fernando Saavedra, Angel Lara, uh, Saulo from Argentina, Ricardo, who's the next speaker, Tony, uh, Derek from Germany, Anotzi from Indonesia. This is an interesting fact. Indonesia, according to Google Analytics, is our biggest market. They are the ones who, the traffic on the website, the largest one by far is from Indonesia. We would like to find a way to engage them more in the, in the community. And uh, then we have Shock. Uh, then Lida, Peter. Uh, Peter Shepetko from Ukraine, Marco Longo from Italy, Michael Povak from Austria, Elaine <coughs> from Malaysia, uh, Jasper from the Netherlands, he was the one who contributed the Hikari, I think. Yeah. We have Steven, who's our accountant expert in the community. <coughs> And the latest two were Mateus Marcelino and Andres Lopez uh, contributed the test before the release. That was really nice. This is an interest list. You can see that there are many backgrounds. There are implementers, developers, graphic designers, testers, uh, people reporting issues, uh, donors. Uh, there are many kind of contributors. There are people right now, 22 countries, I think, which is, uh, I find it amazing. Uh, this is the current list from the top companies uh, contributing to it up here. Uh, this is updated yearly. Uh, so again, the message is not like we are a closed club. <coughs> this is open and we are proud to extend this list as much as we can. Uh, this is really, our goal is that everyone here and everyone out there is the next hero, is the next top maker, every skill is appreciated, you can contribute, as I said, code, support, documentation, testing, translating, in any way, everything is uh, really appreciated in the project. So. Uh, yeah, this is mostly an invitation for everyone to just contribute and we will make sure that we recognize it and you get the attribution you deserve. Uh, since we started the marketing committee, we have uh, had 52% uh, growth on official channels. For, for instance, in the Facebook page, when I presented in 2019, we had 600 uh, followers, I think, and now we have 1,500, that's uh, 900 more people that at least is talking or are interested in knowing what's happening with the project. Uh, so I would like to believe that what we are doing every week matters. <laughs> Uh, we have a lot of community generated content, uh, we have testimonials, we have amazing blogs, the main ones being Chuck and the one from Henry. Uh, those are amazing tools and places to document things that the project needs and the community needs. We have a lot of video tutorials right now, uh, contributed by the community as well. For example, Saul uh, hosted a 15-minute session showing how to install Docker. Uh, there was a presentation about unit testing in Needle Pierre. So all of these things help the community to 
to improve and to get better. Uh, the test cases, the test days are always uh, uh, a success. I will say right now we have like 67 or 82 test scenarios that we test every time before every release. So we make sure we didn't break anything that was uh, working before. We make sure that yeah, we make it easier for implementers to upgrade without being afraid of just having so many calls on the next day. Hey, this doesn't work anymore. What happened? You upgraded, and now I cannot use item pair anymore. What do we have next? Uh, we really want to ease the contribution task. We want to make contributions as easy as possible. Uh, because we know right now there are some bottlenecks that are limiting people from contributing, so we want to uh, improve that. We keep trying to improve documentation and uh, we are working towards that goal. Uh, we want to make the project self-sustainable without losing control or going against the project values. What I mean with this is we want to remove some dependencies we have on some people, some teams, some key members. We would like to have more of a bigger community that can take responsibility on many small things instead of few people with many responsibilities. So this is our goal also. And in the end, we want to make IDMPR the number one open source ERP out there. Uh, I would like to close the presentation with a great uh, <coughs> sentence that Chuck made in a meeting. He said, I envision a world where Item Pierre as a brand like Linux takes over the world. This is, this is something we are looking forward to. I think we have the technology to do it. I think the software is really good, really scalable. It's high quality and we just need to make the world know that we have such a quality product, high quality product uh, behind us. And yeah, that will be it from my side. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you for listening. That's it. <laughs>